So again, welcome to Open Huang Lessons. Today's lesson is Huang Playstyle. So it is going to cover about Huang offense, right? Going in into your opponent. Huang neutral, you know, staying in this type of area. And then Huang defense, being farther from your opponent and looking for uh, mistakes, really. Actually, no, before we even get into that. Here are the things I'm going to be looking for. Looking for. Like, here's my criteria in regards to how I'm looking at these playstyles. So I have four, four, four things, right? So number one is information gathering. How does that playstyle gather information? And how does it use that information to get to its objective, right? Number two is flamingo usage. Is that playstyle leaning towards heavy flamingo usage or moderate flamingo usage, right? Third is punishment conversion. So of course, if you block something that's unsafe, let's say negative 13, negative 14, something that isn't launchable, how do you, what kind of punishment are you giving your opponent to get to the objective you need to do? Because there are some punishers that don't yield as much results, results, right? Or frames or damage, but they do give something else, right? So it's just a question of what punishments they prefer. And then number four is common moves. Like this Huang would more often than not, this playstyle would use this type of move more often than let's say another playstyle, right? So those are the four things I'm looking for when analyzing or generalizing the three types of Horang playstyles, which is again, offense, neutral, and defense. And we're gonna start off right off the gate with offense. So offense is naturally, as it implies, getting into your opponent and getting damage and putting them in these, you know, mix up after mix up after mix up, which is exactly what Horang wants. And he'll get the chip off down three, four or any other move. And of course, if a counter hit comes in, guaranteed RFF, Two back four or any other scenario like counter hit forward one plus two so it's a very mix-up heavy offense is very mix-up heavy you're always gonna be in your opponent's face non-stop and of course how does it gather information we're gonna start with number one how does it gather information so again if offense is mix-up based it's gathering its information through mix-ups what do I mean by that let's cover one of the very classic scenarios for horror which is LFS 1 into forward 1 plus 2, the classic cheese. So again, this is plus 5 into forward 1 plus 2, which is again 15 frames. If you do the math, that's 15 minus 5, and that makes it a 10 frame move. Of course, again, this move is steppable in this scenario, but if they press a button, right, if they press a button, you're going to lose big time. So in an offensive style, you will be running this immediately. Like the moment you get LFS 1, you're going straight up to check if they're pressing a button. Because you want to you want to get the big reward, right? You want to get this juicy, juicy launcher into really, really good damage. Which uh, caps out around 71, right? For for all characters. So you, that's typically what this playstyle wants to be doing. Of course, it puts you at a disadvantage. As you can see, you're negative 9 immediately. So that's why it's kind of like a risk. Even if it is uh, mix-up based information gathering. But... With this, like the moment you know they're blocking mid, like let's say it happens two to three times, immediately th what you're going to be doing is pressing right after forward one plus two, or not even changing forward one plus two. Like you, you remove forward one plus two and then you go straight to down three four. Like you're making sure you're getting the big mix-ups immediately. You're not doing you're not doing small mix-ups at all. None. You're not gonna do small mix-ups. That's like for another playstyle. So you're going for big mix-ups immediately, like every single time. So you're Focusing on your opponent's reactions to the mix-ups. Like, do they know this thing? Do they know X thing? Do they know Y thing? Do they know Z thing, right? How did they stop X option, Y option, Z option, so on and so forth? Like, what option do I run next? It's always like that in, th in regards to Horang uh, offense, right? So that's for information gathering, right? Now, of course, as being an offensive heavy Horang, you're going to be putting your opponent in Flamingo situations a lot. And doing, you know, crazy stuff like this, you know? Stuff you typically wouldn't see uh, other Huangs doing if they're not like super, super offensive. So high flamingo usage that comes like moves like CD, this one. There is risk to this, right? Because even if it is plus four, there is a lot of distance between you and your opponent so they can step right and punish you easily. However, it's <laughs> an offensive Huang wouldn't mind that. So they'll look at that option and be like, okay, Going again, going back to the information gathering portion, they're gonna straight up 
back three immediately. Elif is back three to catch you. And if you, the moment you show that you're gonna block that, they're gonna change it up so they do that cancel into down three four. Right? Stuff like that. So high flamingo usage is always there. So yeah, flamingo forward three, and then if it's like right flamingo, they're gonna go straight into the RFS F four mix up, which is gonna force you, the opposing opponent against the Huang, the offensive Huang, to down jab. Or do a generic low, or do the specific option that beats most of the options after RFS F4 unblock. And they're gonna be catching your timing on when you're gonna down jab or do that high crush with air blade. Or they're gonna stand switch and take their turn immediately. And just continue to put you in mix up after mix up after mix up. And it gets more, more and more difficult to guess against this type of Horang because they're throwing it out non stop. So if you're not prepared for all the Horang stuff, you're gonna be really, really in big danger. Now, of course, punishment conversion. We're at number three. So of course, if classic, right, consensus so far with season four punishment for Hoang is that you use 4-3, right? Plus 5, 30 damage, it's great. And it's stronger than 4-F4, which is 27 damage plus 6 at RFF. What uh, an offensive Hoang would mainly be doing is entering Flamingo. V Flamingo. So if it's, let's say something recovers standing and it's negative 14 or whatever, and the jabs reach, right? Because there's some moves where your jabs wouldn't reach at negative 14 or negative 13, so you'd have to default to stuff like DFM plus 2 and a 4 Z plus 4 from time to time. But if you don't have to do that, you're going to be entering this immediately. So again, anything from either of these flamingos on on hit, but again, this is plus 11 G, you cannot interrupt. Your opponent can never interrupt you. Not unless they're using an evasive move. But even then, even if they use an evasive move, if you use a move that tracks, a lot of the options track at, this, at these frames, you're going to put them in a world of pain. And something as classic like let's say 1-2 two into 3-4, LFS 3-4 or 1-2 into RFS D4, that's gonna be an instant counter hit. And you're gonna get loads of damage into more Oki, which is gonna be more mix-up intensive again and again and again. You're not gonna stop really. So classic offensive Huangs, right, would be using moves like down 3-4. Again, because again it follows high flamingo usage. 1-2-3 and 1-2-4, both on hit and on block, they're not going to stop. Because again, there's options for 1, 2, 3 on block, and of course, 1, 2, 4 on block always has RFS F4. And of course, if they enter RFF, whether that be from, right, LFS down back 4, or let's say RFS 2, right? So classic ways to enter RFF, they're going to be doing RFF forward 3 immediately. And of course, RFF forward 3 on block is like plus, let's just say it's plus a million on block, right? You should just never be challenging any option after RFF forward 3. Not even your evasive move, your rage guard, whatever. You should just never do that. And the classic option is to throw it out with another mix-up layered into it, not something that's like super safe. So maybe, what do you call that? From RFF forward 3 to LFS forward 3. And of course, based on your reactions, they're going to be running the option that they want to run. And if you're not be able to block that option, they're just going to keep running it non-stop. And this is just really, really dangerous, RFF forward 3. Because you cannot press at all. So you get counter hit launched if you press a button, if you attempt to. And if you hold your buttons a lot, he's going to straight up down 3-4 and put himself back in the RFF. And then you're going to have to meet RFF forward 3 again. So that's a general idea of like the play style of an offensive horror. Let's move on to the next. The next Horang playstyle I'm going to cover is neutral. Neutral Horang playstyle. So that means this range. Of course, again, the position reset change, right? So if the offensive Horang wants to be like right in front of your face or like slightly away, mainly most in, in your face, the neutral Horang wants to be sitting around these type of ranges, somewhere where they can go in and somewhere they can go out. So they want to keep both uh, options available to them. So they'll be putting themselves in situations like that. So again, we'll start with number one, information gathering. So it, neutral Hoangs are more safe in regards to gathering information. So let's say, again, let's take the same classic situation for uh, from the offensive ho type Hoang, which is again, LFS 1, 2, 4, 1 plus 2. This scenario, yes, a neutral Hoang might run it, but they're not going to run it two to three times. They won't. They'll run it once once or twice it, like, the, the usage gets less and they wouldn't even run forward 1 plus 3 from time to time because again it's negative 9 it is not a punishable move, punishable move however you are surrendering your turn to your opponent basically you are and you're going to be in front of their face and you have to get a mix up so a neutral heavy huang a neutral type huang right wouldn't want to be running that they wouldn't want to put themselves in that kind of scenario because it removes one of the other things they can do which is again be putting themselves in a situation where they can defend 
rather than just being here straight up for offense. And they already did their offensive turn. Not exactly the best thing for them to do. So what's, what, what they do is they do a DFM plus 2 instead. Negative 3. This now allows you to be put in that neutral or offensive situation every single time. Or a DF1, which is negative 1. And has, you know, pushback. So nat naturally, you're not going to be following up a lot of stuff. But if your opponent... So again, the information, how that situation would go in terms of information gathering is that after LFS1 to DF1 plus 2 or DF1, they're going to be checking what your reaction is. And they're going to confirm that reaction over a course of time. And then they'll throw out something that's also kind of safe, like let's say down back 3 after that. After LFS1. So if you continue to show that you're going to be standing here, they're not going to go, they're not going to go straight to down 3-4, like an offensive Horang. They're going to go straight for something safer, like down back 3 or down back 4, which is negative 12 on block, which is perfect. You really don't want to be putting yourself... And of course, they have the option to, again, enter offense. It's about keeping both things present, offense and defense, from a neutral standpoint. So we talk about Flamingo usage, number 2. They're not as heavy Flamingo users. They're going to be somewhere moderate, right? Somewhere in the middle from heavy to not heavy. Like from high, middle to low. They would be in the middle because they need to use certain scenarios from the offensive and defensive type horangs to find out what your exact situ your reactions are in how they gather information while keeping it both open to offense and defense. So Flamingo usage would look something like, let's say, if they enter Flaming from Flamingo from the jabs, 1-2-3 or 1-2-4, they're going to be doing stuff that are kind of safe, but at the same time can be beaten-ish. Like 1-2-3 into LFS1, again, this could be high crushed, even on block, and, or jab trade at plus 3. And they'll be doing that because it doesn't have that much risk, although they have an option to lose. And if they enter right Flamingo, let's say they do down 3-4, they're going to be more or less going to be doing RFSD of 4. Now again, this is a scenario plus 1. Of course, majority of your options are backdashable. But they want to keep that option available. So again, if your opponent backdashes, they know the anti Hoang stuff, you could literally just crouch dash in into another down 3-4 into RFSD of 4 and crouch dash in into a DF1 and backdash and see if they if they attempt the challenge, that's when you get your whiff punish back 3. You know, it's scenarios like that. And of course, if you're going to operate it in a different way, down 3-4 into RFSD 4 on block, you could literally backdash and remain in neutral. Very, very uh, simple. So that's how their Flamingo usage usually turns out, like per scenario of, of Flamingo. So of course, their punishment conversion is more neutral based. You know, again, it's keeping about both, both doors open. So again, if we go back to, again, as 4-3 being the general consensus, if offensive Horangs want to be entering Flamingo immediately from these two, to Put mix up after mix up after mix up. What well, a neutral heavy Huang is going to be doing, or a neutral playstyle is going to be doing 4 3. 4 3 or 4 F4. Most of the time. If they ever enter these, it's because they're gathering they're gathering information or they know you're weak towards a certain thing, and then they're gonna start moving from their neutral and make it neutral offensive or neutral defensive, depending on how you've reacted from again how they're gathering information and adapting it towards uh, their opponent versus you know Huang's flamingo. So 4-3 is going to be their favorite, favorite, single-handedly their favorite <laughs> uh, Punisher. Because this puts them in both situations. So they could go big with forward 1 plus 2, or they could keep it neutral and do DF1 plus 2, or DF1 and be on their way. Or 4-3 into wait, and to wait for a reaction. So their more, more common moves would be stuff like, let's say, JFSR. Because again, at negative 8, you're still at a position where your opponent is kind of in front of you and at the same time you can move away and still go in depending on their reactions. An offensive forearm wouldn't want to be spamming JFSR 24-7 because it defeats the purpose of getting a mix-up after mix-up after mix-up. A neutral heavy Huang would be like would probably be using JFSR a little bit more often to get more reactions off you off you while maintaining both an offensive distance and a defensive distance, which again is the neutral position. Another one of them would be DF1 or DF1 plus 2. Like, this is going to be a personal favorite of neutral heavy Huangs. They have a classic mid check. And that opens up both scenarios. And of course, their favorite low could be down back 4. A standing 16 frame low that's negative 12 on block. And has the ability to enter into offense. <laughs> super, super important. So, that finishes up neutral playstyle for Huang. Again, reminder these are all general, general ideas. Each and every one of these playstyles can be mixed and matched, and you could specify it and fine-tune it for yourself. We're going to go to the last one, which is defense. A defensive horn, defensive playstyle. 
Now that's probably the least common out of the two or out of the three, right? So you encounter more offensive or neutral based Huarangs. I myself am a neutral based Huarang. Defensive based Huarangs are a little bit more, well, they just straight up just don't like using Flamingo or even RFF. Like they just stray away from it. They're more LFF heavy than anything else. So how do they gather their information? Right? Let's go back to number one. So their information gathering will probably be the safest out of the three. So if, if again, offensive is very mix up. They're gonna look at the options that you're, which option is not working and then they'll move on to the next option. Neutral would be keeping themselves with two doors open, two windows open at all, the, at all times. Defensive, Huangs with information gathering. Again, let's use the classic situation. LFS1, the full one plus two. A defensive Huang would just never run this. If ever they run this, it's once. That's about it, once. Once every round, maybe, or once every two rounds, something like that. They would barely be running it because, again, it defeats the purpose of being in defense in the first place because you don't want to be negative nine on defense. You want to have more options to get away and step your opponent and find openings, like, let's say, a forward three into LFS, a forward four, or a back one and stuff like that to make your, <laughs> to, you know, so your opponent's neutral or offense doesn't pan out as they want. You'll be winning on defense. Remember, your objective is defense. So this scenario here would be very similar to be the neutral one, right? Whether they could run also the DF1 plus 2 or the DF1. Or, the, this would be far more common with defensive horns, LFS1 to nothing. And they just go away. They run, they leave that threat of that plus 5 hanging on you without using its frames. And if ever they use the frames, they're going to be doing the DF1 at best. DF1 or DF1 plus 2. Or, they'll try to lock you in with DF4. Of course, again, this can be jab interrupted. It's again, 16 minus 5, so that's 11 frames. But they'll be doing stuff like that. And then, of course, down back three. They'll be running less on the down back four. If they run down back four, they're never entering, what do you call that? Right climbing game. Because, again, you open yourself up to getting interrupted and getting challenged in this scenario. Even if RFS F4 is the best option you can run. Still high crushable. So of course their, their Flamingo usage is extremely the lowest, the lowest out of the three. So if ever they enter Flamingo, let's say on hit, right? So if they get 1-2 on hit, they're going to be running something safe like this. LFS2 or LFS F4. And of course the right Flamingo version of that would be LFS1 and LFS4 would be. And of course the highs and leave the, the frames hanging and then backdash away and see what your reaction is all the time. Like they're always going to be baiting and looking for the way you want to challenge or take back your turn or fight back etc 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 so their flamingo used to be super super basic like they probably won't even be running art as df4 or if they do they run it they don't even use it they go away like they're satisfied with taking that 20 damage and hanging around and waiting for you to whiff and then that's when the big back three comes in so even like down 4 lfs1 is very very rfs1 super super common for defensive horns and then they'll use that negative two frames to step or you know wait out wait it out so of course let's talk about punishment conversion let's go to number three so again if offense is neutral uh mix up intensive you gotta enter that one two the flamingo neutral's gonna be four three defensive horangs as well are going to be four three or four f four depending on what stance is more preferable for the defensive horang whether they want to be an rff or lff but again mainly lff is for neutral uh defensive heavy Huarangs, so 4-3 into getting away, that's about it. They take their punishment and then that's it. Or they do the smallest of checks and then they're gone. <laughs> or 4-3 four, three, four, three into a, a jab like they, and then that's it. Like They don't really use it, they use their frames as much, they're gonna take the they're satisfied with the damage and be on their way all the time. So of course one of the more common moves for a defensive Huarang to use, of course back 3. Because they're they're looking for the the big whiffs and again this this get a this this move did get a buff in terms of range so it's gonna hit from a mile away most especially when you're extending your hurt box with your move so here it is whiffing right now but if Huang was pressing a button for sure that would have catched at this exact range would have been enough to catch the opposing Huang from pressing his button uh, one of their personal favorites of course is gonna be DF1 plus two or DF1 you'll be using the options that are generally the safest and give them the checks they need so that they can continuously see what options you're running and just continuously chip away with like again the third move would be down back three and yeah, stuff like that all the time and they're gonna be super movement like offense movement's gonna be done via moves mainly like fish again you'll be entering moves from here here like that's the movement stuff like that neutral is gonna be they might include some movement here and there like that to check out 
defense is gonna be mainly movement because they're not gonna be committing to any button anytime soon until they know and have gathered enough information to run their guaranteed options or options that they know will more or less hit you eight out of ten times stuff like that so again that's been the general idea or play styles for Huang, offense, neutral, and defense. Again, reminder, general idea. <laughs> Again, all of this is, you can mix it, match it, fine tune it, change it, etc., etc. For as long as you're hitting the objective of the playstyle, which is again, for offense, getting into offense, getting into damage, neutral, keeping both sides of the door open. So it's more like a threat type based <laughs> playstyle. Then of course your defense, Defending non-stop and keeping out and running out the time and all that kind of stuff. And of course, there are also smaller playstyles in between, so that'd be something like offensive neutral, uh, defensive neutral, stuff like that. But those are a little bit more complicated to cover because they they still mainly stem from neutral, basically. But they don't fully commit to offense or fully commit to defense. Yes, <laughs> I'm rambled on long enough. So again, that has been the cheese for today. I've been Frontier, and thank you for watching. 4-3 versus 4-4. Four four. To me, it's all about what you want. What do you prefer? Do you want 27 damage? You want lesser damage for more frames, one additional frames, and you want to be in RFF immediately? Or do you want to remain in LFF? Take three more damage and one frame less. And keep your options more open. Because you have access to everything from LFF, while in RFF, you're restricted to mostly RFF moves with a couple of LFF moves.